So, you are here to watch about lighting. Well, I am here for you. My name is Kapil and I am going to tell you how you can light your scene or character which makes your render truly shine. We are going to do this in Blender's real-time rendering engine EV and this will be three-part series as follows understanding lights, lighting a character and light groups. When it comes to lighting a scene, our goal is usually to minimize shadows but here's the catch. Shadows are what gives object their form and depth. Without shadows, everything would look flat, like a 2D drawing. Even 2D artists pay close attention to the shadows. Here, in this example, I light a monkey face with a flat shading and another one with shadows. Whereas first one is looks flat, we can only be able to see outer lines of the character. Besides that, in the second one with shadows reveal that this is a monkey face. Now think of this way. If you place a light really close to an object, you get soft, gentle shadows. But if you move the light far away, you will get hard and strong shadows. Here in this scene, I put area light closer to the monkey face that creates soft and light shadows. But if you put the light away from the monkey, we get the hard and dark shadows. And the size of light source also matter. A small light source gives crisp and detailed shadows which help us to find details of an object. Like in this first example where we observe small details on the terrain. While a bigger light source with the same intensity creates softer shadows that reveals the object overall form. But using a small light source on a human character to emphasize details can be a bit challenging. For example, I downloaded a realistic human character INR from Blender Studio which is free and removed everything except face and eyes. Now when I put a small area light on the character, you can see how it looks. The fourth important aspect is the color of the light. When we look around in nature, we found Kelvin colors that are not overly saturated. The Kelvin scale have ranged from 1000 to 10,000, where values of 1000 or lower tend to be reddish and values of 10,000 or higher appear bluish. Now, if we shift our focus to the streets of a city, we encounter the typical vibrant colors such as saturated pink. Now let's break down some example of animated movies having amazing stylized lighting. In most of Disney movies, we find a soft gradients in terms of lighting. However, in anime stylization, this can look different with a kind sharp lighting. Here in the Beastars character created as 3D model and shading than more likely traditional 2D. Both of them have different stylization but the core principles remain same. Like Lighting help us to understand the situation and mood of the shot, time of day, weather and the location of the scene. Let's talk about breaking the rules. You can see that some animated and live action movies break the rules of lighting. For example, in this shot from Encanto, you can see sunlight coming from the front left hand side of Mirabel. Now in the second shot where another character is on opposite side of Mirabel. Here also sunlight comes from left hand side of another character, which is technically incorrect. But in the third shot, again sunlight comes from the back side of another character appearing on his shell, which is correct according to the overall sequence. Then in the fourth image, it's quite similar to the second one. Nice. This is how rules are broken. And it's justified because without these minor changes, the entire scene may not look right. These are subtle changes that help improve the overall lighting, which might not be easily recognized by the audience. If you want to do exercise related to this, you can check out this scene of Minions and analyze where things are not technically right. Lighting is not only that you grab some different types of lights and you start placing them in different locations. That is final thing to do. We have to analyze and perform. Then we grab the lights. 
that's it for today guys i hope you find this video helpful and stay tuned for second part where we will go to blender and light up a character